lots of analysts and skeptics said, you know, this doesn't make any sense. Why would they go and do this? It was definitely a kind of bet the company type move. Is there any platform dynamic here? And the answer is no. So BC Partners, private equity firm, uh, bought PetSmart in 2015, right? Uh, PetSmart, leading bricks and mortar, specialty retailer, 1,600 plus stores. Um, and uh, they, they took the company private, BC Partners and some limited partners here. Okay. Then a couple of years later, they go by Chewy for about $3.3 billion. Chewy being the leading linear e-commerce pet store um, in the market. Basically now bringing the, the leading retail brick and mortar pet store with the leading e-commerce pet store into one. Yep. Um, lots of analysts and skeptics said, you know, this doesn't make any sense. Why would they go and do this? Um, clearly, we've seen in the past few years subsequent to that roll up that I think actually Chewy has just operated quite independently from PetSmart. I don't even know if there's been too much synergy. I think PetSmart was able to help capitalize the business, um, help Chewy kind of continue to focus on growth, bring some capital to the table in the transaction. Um, and I think just the pet industry in general has done very well for itself. I think part of the rationale of the acquisition was PetSmart's uh, private equity owners were looking at their business and said, we need to do e-commerce. We can't build it ourselves. It's too late. And we have too many problems going on with the real estate and the core business and all those typical retail problems that we've talked about a lot on the show. Uh, so they said, all right, let's go buy this so we can own some of that growth. It was definitely a kind of bet the company type move. Uh, and mm -hmm. I, it, it has paid off pretty well, at least in the short term for them. They lay out the theses. Here's the PetSmart investment thesis. Okay. And then here's the Chewy investment thesis. You read through these bullets. The last bullet kind of touches on synergies and basically just says they can partner up in vendor negotiations and have more leverage with vendors. That's it. So... I think really it was just they had a good read on the industry and they said there's a huge growth area here in e-com. They clearly seen how effective Chewy was in e-com relative to what PetSmart was trying to do and not doing well. And they made a good bet. Now they spun out Chewy back into a public company. Right. PetSmart also a public company now. And they so, the, so they spun out Chewy as a public company. They own 70% of Chewy. Roughly after the IPO, yeah. Roughly. And Chewy is currently worth about $9 billion market cap on the public stock market. So do the math. Basically, BC partners from the $3.3 .3 billion roughly doubled that money um, in, in, what, in what their ownership stake is worth today in Chewy. By all measures, a fantastic investment, basically over two years, doubling a few billion dollars. Pretty good return. Interestingly enough, you say, is there any platform dynamic here? And the answer is no. As you can see here from the Synergy Bullet, vendor negotiations, that spells linear. That spells I am buying products from manufacturers or from distributors buying them, putting them on my balance sheet, and then reselling them again. I've actually spoken to the PetSmart CEO about this and said, hey, would you ever think about letting third-party sellers come and sell on, you know, and open up a marketplace on Chewy and get network effects and get a wider assortment of inventory? Because Chewy doesn't have every product that Amazon has for pets. It's just a much more curated experience. Right. There's a much lot more tightly tailored to that buying experience. They're very big on customer service and, you know, we can help you find the right product. And it, it's more of a kind of value added service model in combination with e-commerce. And there's also been, I think, over the last few years, a lot more focus. I can tell you this is a, a pet owner, uh, pet safety, you know, quality products and uh, Chewy has definitely played into that, I think, pretty well to build, you know, for now, a loyal audience. I think the challenge for them long term is uh, how do you avoid commoditization over the long term and compete with some of these marketplace companies? Yeah, it's kind of like if you're buying a toy, I've got a 15 month puppy and, <laughs> you know, you say, well, is this is this toy pet safe? You know, am I going to know that if 
if you chew through the thing, like he loves to chew through everything, could that actually harm him? Because it's kind of like a kid, right? And you don't want to put things in front of the kid that could hurt him or kill him or, you know, anything like that. So um, I think that's where this linear dynamic, to your point, is definitely starting to play out with safety, with just a more regulated, curated product environment actually resonating with customers clearly. Right. So th things like pet food and pet toys are historically less stringently regulated than human products. Right. So there's been uh, a lot of, uh, you know, people concerned about the quality of stuff that their pet is getting as, you know, you have this big millennial trend of everyone is getting a pet now and mm -hmm. maybe delaying having kids and treating the pet, uh, you know, like a, <laughs> like a child, as you're saying. And uh, th this, this kind of, Heavy service touch that that Chewy has is definitely playing into that and capitalizing on that pretty yeah. well. Yeah, I mean, it is interesting. I mean, there's definitely there's definitely a platform dynamic here. Maybe there are certain product categories that are less critical, or you could open those up. They're not as stringent. Where if my dog eats the toy and he could be at risk, I don't want to take a, a gamble there. But are there other product categories that you could open up? Probably. The other thing is the services dynamic. And this actually, this bullet was part of the PetSmart investment thesis here, where they have a kind of services network. They have a partnership with Banfield offering uh, full veterinary services in 800 locations. An another couple notable companies uh, from a services marketplace standpoint that our platforms would be WAG. Um, and rover and um i'm gonna come back to wag because it's also gotten a lot of money from our favorite investor softbank hi this is alex mozed thanks for joining us on winner take all if you enjoyed the content today which i bet you did please comment subscribe and definitely message me on twitter when we're doing live streams also please note all opinions expressed about stocks or public companies on the show are exactly that opinions this is not investment advice don't act on it. Wisdom Tree licensed Applico's Platform Insights data product to aid in the creation of the Plat ETF. Thanks for joining us.